Hello, everybody. This is Evan Abrams, and welcome to the third of our Learn from the Pro series on Adobe After Effects. In this video, we are going to talk about compositions. Compositions are like the basic building blocks of what you're going to be doing in After Effects. Understanding compositions is one of the core competencies of Adobe After Effects. So with that little bit of word humor out of the way, let's get into it. So when you first open up After Effects, there are no compositions in here. Even though I've already imported some footage, we need to bring in some comps or we need to put this footage into some comps short form for composition so that we can start working with them and doing things. So you can make a new composition in many ways. If you want to make an empty one, you can just go ahead and click this little button down here in the project window. It's the classic way to make a composition. Or you can click here, the new composition button. Or again, you could go composition, new composition in the menus or command N on a Mac, control N on a PC. Either way, it's gonna bring up your composition settings. Now the composition settings are controlling how large the frame is and how many of those frames you'll see in a second. So that's the frame size and the frame rate. And of course the pixel aspect ratio. Are all of the pixels that make up that frame squares or are they rectangles? Usually they're squares. New video technology is almost all in squares, but if you're working with older or archival things, this might be different. The main thing to remember is that your frame size and frame rate is likely gonna be determined by what you do with this thing afterwards. If you're planning to export this to go on broadcast television, you need to look up the standards for the TV sets that's gonna be broadcast on and use those settings. If this is gonna be on arena graphics, these numbers might not fit in any preset on the list. So a little bit of research when you start your projects definitely helps. You can set the composition names, and I recommend naming it something you'll remember based on what's gonna be in the composition and where it fits in your workflow. And then down here, we have what duration is this gonna be? How long is the comp gonna be? I recommend making it longer than you think you need. It could be hours, minutes, seconds, or even just frames long. And the resolution here, we can actually change later as we're viewing the composition. So don't worry too much about that. And then finally down here, the background color, what is the default background color? Usually we just leave it as black. So I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see now in the composition window, we have our composition made. In our project, we've created comp one and it's opened it down here on the timeline. If you wanna change any of the settings about these compositions later on, you can. You're not locked in. You can go to this little menu here in the timeline. You can go to this little menu up here in the composition window. You can right click on any comp in the project window and go to composition settings or with the composition setting, command K, control K, this menu up here. There's so many ways to access these things. Now, you can also make a composition out of footage that you already have laying around. If I wanted a composition that's the exact same size and frame rate as this iPad.mov, I can just drag that onto a composition and it'll create a container composition that contains exactly this clip that I've put in there. The same thing if I take an image and just drag that onto the new composition button, it'll create a composition that is the same size as that image. And it'll use defaults to determine the duration and frame rate of this comp. You'll likely want to go in and change those settings after you do that. You can also create a comp out of multiple footage items. If you want many things in it, or you want to make many at once, you can select multiple footage elements, drag them into the new composition button, and you'll get this dialogue. You can make one composition with all these in it, or you can make multiple compositions if you wish. Then you have some options. Do you wanna use the dimensions from a specific one of those clips? And if there are any stills, how long should they be on for? And then finally, should these be sequenced in the comp or not? And if they are sequenced, should they overlap each other? Once you've determined all that, you hit okay, and it's gonna create a new comp with your footage in it. Now we talked a little bit about how to navigate around this window in our tour of the interface. You can use your magnifying glass to zoom in and out. You can use your hand tool to pan around. Here in the composition window, you can also zoom in and out using this little menu down here to go from making this fit the window, or you can pick a specific number. Also something very important in here, is to click here to see what resolution you're looking at. You may be degrading the resolution when you're working so that you have a smoother playback experience. So if you wanna play things back in real time, sometimes you need to change your settings. Also down here, we have the fast 
previews button, you might turn this off or have it set to adaptive resolution, where it'll try to show you the best resolution to keep things running smoothly. Now, also in this view, I want to point out, you can see that footage goes outside of this rectangle. This rectangle represents what you'll be able to see when you render this. So you can have things that go outside of this rectangle. You just won't be able to see them. That information is there, nothing's cropped or lost, you just can't see it because it's not in frame. I think that's enough of the basics for now. If you understand these concepts about compositions, that's really all you need to know. As we continue this series, we're gonna be importing some things, we're gonna be making layers, we're gonna be animating things on the timeline. But all of that also happens in the composition. So hopefully you're comfortable with everything that we covered so far, and you stick with us for more of this series. Thanks again for watching. I'm Evan Abrams for Adobe Creative Cloud and I'll see you in the next video.